Welcome to Overwatch. Welcome to another episode of Coaching the Mini. This is the third one I've done today, but I, I enjoy battle. doing these. Oh, it's very loud, Rialto. As a warning, the video is a bit of a potato. Um, apparently, Poppy has literally playing on a toaster. So, yeah. It's still viewable. It just might be a little bit tough at times. But this is sort of one of the benefits of replays is that people who don't have good computers can at least get some kind of footage that is somewhat viewable. It does get better slightly. It's not this bad throughout. I have mentioned in the past, if you have a NVIDIA card, Shadowplay is great. It's very light. OBS is a little bit more intensive, but works pretty well. And you see it's modern because that guy has the new Zen skin. Oh! Oh, you paid 200 whole Overwatch League tokens for that. I still need to buy it myself. Now, we are spoiled on what the enemy team is running, but we can see our team. We can have a look at our team. So, when I'm playing Arna, okay, I always like to, you know, imagine, okay, well, who am I going to be ulting? What am I going to be doing? Who am I going to be healing? Uh, pretty good team for heals, actually. Like, Doomfist actually benefits a lot from having an Arna. If you can land the shots, that's fine. Uh... Otherwise, like, these three are going to be healed a lot by you. At least you can kind of look after himself. Pretty good. You can nano Doomfist. You can nano Reinhardt. That's what I do. I do like the pink, but I need to change my color now. There we go. That'll... See? Yellow. Yellow will contrast nicely. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. Mm, full contrast. Beautiful. Instant lesson. Right? Instant lesson as a support player. Especially, but even as DPS. And you'll see me do this if you watch me play the actual goddamn game. Unbelievably. Whenever I leave spawn, I tend to wait a second. Like, just a second or two. I generally let tanks roll out a little bit first. Don't just blunder out of the spawn. For the love of God. Poppy said, I knew that was going on. Yeah, I, the moment I saw this and I saw him leap out, it's just like straight away he gets nailed. Uh, it could have been an arrow. It could have been a Widowmaker. It could have been anything. Don't. There is literally no benefit to the support doing this and just rushing out the door. That's Reinhardt getting ult charge. That's 8% ult charge on Rein. And like 4% on you. Not a good trade. There is one thing I'll criticize here straight away, which is that we just sort of fire all our cooldowns. I don't mind the sleep dart too much because it's sort of like a speculative one. I don't like the grenade. Just being used on the barrier. Sort of the idea here, I imagine, is that sometimes Reinhardt's dropped the barrier and dipped the barrier here and there. Okay, I need to move this up slightly. There we go. Um, sometimes Reinhardt's dropped the barrier and you can occasionally catch a bunch of people with it, but the sleep dart I'm fine with. The grenade you kind of want to keep. You see what I mean by it's a little bit of a potato? Um, it's, it's viewable. It's It's doable. I just, just don't expect a silky smooth frame rate. I don't know if this is just for the replay with the recording. Um, Poppy, I'm curious at what frame rate you actually end up playing at. If you can, at least hit 60. If you cannot, try. 35 to 40. That's rough. I'd say that's actually pretty rough for Ana, especially. It's not impossible, but it is going to make your life a little bit harder. Like, it is a very weird thing, but frame rate has a big impact on aim. Something with this bridge that I want to highlight. Because we've seen that their team is running a Doomfist, and their team is running a Lucio, so we have to be very aware of this bridge. This bridge is a nightmare. You have two choices, as far as I'm concerned. And this plays into, like, the fundamental aspect of Ana in my mind. The fundamental aspect of Ana is, can I scope in, or can't I scope in? When you are all the way back here on Rialto, and dealing with this Rialto bridge... Right, we have the bridge... Uh, where I like magenta. We have the bridge and you got like the, the canal under it. And you got this little courtyard area back here where we are. And then you have like the team and you got like this door thing over here and you got this corner. As long as we're back here, it is actually very difficult, and especially if they don't have a widow, to do anything. Like they don't have anything super ranged. They don't have anything like shooting up here and shooting at us. We can afford to scope in here. If you see like a widow or a Hanzo or a McCree or something playing on the high ground here that's hit scan, you can't then scope in. But because they're playing Doom Symmetra, okay, well, threats aren't going to get close to us. So we can scope in here, and that means that you can just, like, freely shoot. The next thing to say is that as you do get to this corner, cross this bridge as quickly as possible. Cross this bridge as quickly as possible. 
Yeah, that Doomfist is on his own. Now that your Reinhardt's dead, team's backing out, we stay backed out, I'm kinda fine with that. It's this I don't like. This like this gives me heebie jeebies. Right? Standing on this bridge. That's in Doomfist in range, that's in Lucio range. We can kinda play from behind the bridge. Now grenade's slightly off. Let me explain why. Uh, it kind of works here because this Doomfist is not is going after a weird target. I will generally try and aim the grenade. Like this feels like the grenade is aimed at Doomfist, and I find that isn't quite as effective as aiming the grenade in the space. Like draw a line between you and Doomfist, and aim it at like the center point between that line. See so where Doomfist is landing. You try and hit both you and him, uh, or at least other people around him, because if you think about how Doomfist engages right when he comes in he generally comes in with his slam and then he'll uppercut which also launches him forward and launches you forward a little bit so he engages inwards so if you grenade in front of you well he's got to slam in onto the grenade perhaps and then he's got to uppercut and still be near where this grenade lands and as a result you hit you you hit him and it's less likely for him to like you know punch forward or some shit or launch himself forward and just go past it and then hit you and then launch you up and you didn't anti-heal him and that's always a frustrating thing you at least want to make him pay for it he just bounces out because he's doomfist resident sleeper hanzo does hanzo things this position this is honestly good to me um which is that we don't scope in here it's a little bit too risky and also everyone's so close to us that we need to have a bit of situational awareness so playing without scoping in here feels correct Doomfist is somewhere. It's actually a fine nade. Okay, it heals out. Doomfist. The thing I like about this nade is like... So we have the moment of confusion as the Doomfist like goes somewhere. This is always the annoying part. It's actually landed up here, I think. Or that might be ours. No, that was theirs. Okay. And we see this one. And we don't waste any time. And honestly, this is the right move. And look, oh, Anna's hand. Um, yeah, don't waste any time. Don't like try and heal him. Just get that nade out there. Get some heals on him. And hey... He actually does his job. Now we're safe, we know the enemy needs to push back. Scoped in, good stuff. We've heard that they've nanoed. They, so... We're kind of free to nano. I would honestly like it if this Reinhardt held the corner a little bit better. We lose Doomfist. Might not be a bad time to nano Ryan here. The reason why I say that is... Chances are, like, this Ryan's gone towards something. Um, their Reinhardt has hit the Doomfist and I suspect he's gone in there. This also frees the Reinhardt to just go aggressively and give you even more space. Even if there's nothing in there, it will just push the enemy team out. That now, like, after seeing these two kills come through, okay. Like, like I'd probably just nano him there. It's probably, it might be a failure on my part, but then, oh shit, okay. Once these deaths come in, yeah, we just pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Like, your job now is to get out. Just run, just run, just run. I think the scoping on the Hanzo is a little bit greedy. I remember when I was sort of previewing this, just checking that, like, the footage was somewhat usable. I remember, like, looking at this moment and thinking, huh, okay. Like, I get why you're shooting it. But is this like a teaching moment? And the answer is honestly, in my mind, no. Um, no. No, it is not a teaching moment. The reason why I don't consider this a teaching moment is the amount of DPS that I have seen that don't just shoot the fucking Symmetra turret is infuriating. This Hanzo actually does. Um, and like the optimal thing to do if you know your DPS is actually going to shoot it is to heal the DPS, but... I've given up on making that assumption, so I am honestly fine with us taking a split second to shoot it and then hitting the hands over. Very nice. Mentioned in the email that sim walls messed you up a lot, sim walls mess Anna up a hell of a lot. The thing I would say here is we should probably actually be moving in on this grav. Weird thing to say, right? But there's a couple of things that occur to me very quickly that it's a little bit hard to make out. First, this Doomfist is going to do whatever he likes. 
Second, we can't actually help our two tanks in our current position, and who does Anna help best? Tanks. So we're kind of cut off here, right? We're split. Second, in this, the people caught in this bubble, in this bubble, in this grav, are Symmetra and Zarya. The Rhine isn't in there. If we nade that, we win. And so we kind of just nade ourselves, and I don't think we even needed to do that. Oh no, we needed to do that for ourselves. Okay, actually, no, that makes some sense there. What hit us? We're getting hit by a Sim Turret, okay. No, that's fair enough. I missed the Sim Turret. Ignore me. I'm not the keenest on that nano. That nano feels a bit more panicked than it has any right to be. I imagine we were looking for the Doom Fist, but we hit the Hanzo. Not quite necessary. That was a good grenade. That's perfect. My shots find their marks. The payload has reached the checkpoint. The reason why like I'm not keen on that nano just to explain further is I'd rather see it go like either on the Rhine or not at all. Because you've killed so many that you just kinda need to clinch it at this point. And your goal is to push the payload. If you nano the Reinhardt, they can't contest the payload anymore. My shots find their mark. Okay. The payload has reached the checkpoint. I'm gonna have on DPS using the charts too, yeah, man. It drives me crazy. Our position here is slightly risky, but will actually kind of work as long as their team is busy. Weird as it sounds, this is actually a good instance for a grenade. So the moment you see this sim, you should be going like, what the f- <laughs> Actually first, let's comment on this position here. Like first and foremost, your team is kind of over pushing. But I'm okay with us taking a step out here. The only thing that can really kill us is the Ana, and she should be healing at this point. It's very unlikely anyone else is going to actually get to us, so we can do this. Sound barrier, so the team's safe. When the sim appears and we like notice, I would just grenade straight away. Uh, it is off cooldown, isn't it? Is it on cooldown? I can't see. It just comes off cooldown now. I would just nade instantly. I wouldn't try shooting. Just because the amount, like the amount that I trust the Hanzo to shoot a Symmetra who's evading is zero, um, and it will kill her at this point. So it just gets rid of her straight away. Like no fast, no mass. We actually end up landing the shots, which is really nice. In which case, I probably just nade towards this corner. Which you end up doing a little bit later than I would. The reason why I nade towards this corner is it looks like there's a fight happening there, and it just makes the Zarya a bit safer, makes the Hanzo a little bit safer, or the Lucio, I think, a little bit safer. This is the frustrating part, Zana. You are technically doing things right, though. Very nice. Did the Lucio block that nade? Nope, it hit. He was just still anteed. Part of why I don't like the, the purple. It's a beautiful color. Oh, the pink. Purpley pink. It's a beautiful color. It is the same color as anti-heal. I've no idea if it's it's this obnoxious in game, but I'm not sure. We tried. Honestly, it's fine. Like you tried to heal into it, you hit a bunch of people in the nade. At this point, this is literally um, trying to alt charge. We should be just backing out. This is not good. Just keep backing up, keep backing up. This seems to be an effect of low graphics. It's something you're just going to have to get used to. This should all be shaded in. For some reason this circle is not shaded in, which is bizarre. Um, that's a real issue. Because, yeah, it turns out you are in the circle. Spoiler alert, Doomfist is coming for you. 99.999% um, of the time he is going right for you. But this fight is over. Like, the moment they land this grab and get some kills, this fight is done. Just, we are finished. You should be trying to 
The only reason you're healing people at this second is to keep people, like, healed in the fight. Or keep people healed to give you some ult charge. They commit more resources to it. To me, this is just a slow death. Like, your team got a kill or two, but even then, they're just so durable. Oh, the hands has gone huge. Might actually be able to salvage this. Say, get there, take stock of the situation, and then nano the Winston, maybe. It's not really necessary. There. Okay, yep, I'm fine with that. That's actually perfect. This is always awkward. That's frustrating, but doesn't matter. Just want to see the end of this fight. And then we'll go over what went right, what went wrong. Okay. That's an Ernest Lamb. You should still, you might still be able to get away from it, especially if you went around the corner. You can line of sight now, um, slam. Like, standing in doorways is a very good way of duking it. The reason why I say this is perfect is because the enemy team have to contest at this point. So you know that they're going to come into a fight. You wait till almost the zenith, or like just past the zenith of the jump. Lucio almost jumps in the way, but thankfully doesn't. Um, and you know that they have to kind of contest at this point. So this is just going to throw a monkey into their plans. Not even a wrench, just a full gorilla. I'm fine with us just healing him as well. Just going to give us some ult charge. So it's frustrating, but honestly, not the end of the world. Happens. I wouldn't be too worried about like trying to land antis into them. Like They don't have a zen, so it's honestly okay. If they do have a zen, it becomes much higher priority to land the anti-heal into the grab. You should be playing like much harder for it then. I understand the frustration of this, um, but just make a decision. Either heal or go on the payload. When you're doing this, it's confusing for everybody. And I'd say you're fine just healing here. It shouldn't make too much of a difference. And yeah, scoping in is fine here. You have the time, you have the space to do so. It makes your healing more reliable. Now we can actually heal from the payload. That's our turn. Trying to get slooped up. Okay, didn't hit. Anti didn't hit. I like the respect we're giving her. Perfect. Welcome to all the Hey, thank you, subscribe, Lord. Throw the grenade in. I'm so okay. glad coaching's back. Back to our roots, smile. Okay, let's talk about everything happening. So yeah, we made our decision, we committed, now we're pushing the payload while healing. I love the choice of just scoping in, pumping out as much healing as possible. Um, this is like the ideal, I talk about this every single coach in the many with Anana, but it's worth reiterating again and again and again and again because it's just a very good point, which is sort of the, the Ana L or the Ana T position, which is the optimal position for Anana. Pretend that like this is a wall, right? So this is all wall. The actual path is like, you know, around here, or let's actually just do this in yellow. All right, so we have like a corridor situation. You as Anna positioned here, your team positioned here, and the enemy, who have confusingly done in blue, is positioned here. This is ideal as long as your team understands that they cannot push further in, right? As long as your team understands the moment they go around this corner, they lose you. Um, this is perfect right because you can just scope in pump out so much healing into your team and especially now that but you know Anna darts penetrate um you can heal everybody without having to worry about sort of the, the lineup you don't have to worry about getting to high ground or anything to sort of be able to shoot past people anymore you can just pump healing into this team and be a-okay and that situation manifests again and again it's manifesting here the biggest word of advice i will say to anyone playing with an Anna is you can only play in the line of sight of the Anna. The second you leave that line of sight, bad things happen. Bad things happen immediately. She cannot quickly readjust and get to you, so you have to play in line of sight with the Ana. A good example is this Doomfist sort of being in a really awkward place for you. 
Once this grav lands, I would make the assumption that this is sort of GG on this fight. And yeah, all I will try and do is, like, that split second is jump around the corner, throw a nade into it. All you're looking to do is get that last 10% of this. Because, hey, they don't have a Zen. If they don't have a Zen, or they don't have a Lucio anymore, uh, they have nothing that can stop Nano Winston. Nano Winston will just kill everybody. Nano Doomfist could maybe do the same. Sleep hit the Zarya, but she was woken up instantly. It happens. Okay. My team's yeah, let's pick everybody up. As long, okay. Very minor thing, but important to know on Rialto. If you stay by this wall, you are completely safe healing here. But here, you're actually vulnerable here. Um, it's it's like a minor thing for now because again, the only thing that could hit us at this long range is the Ana. But it's just something that I'm very cognizant of. It's like sight lines. And enemy sight lines, and you've got to keep in mind that this is not a complete wall, right? There's big old gaps in this wall. And these big old gaps mean that if you step into the wrong place, the enemy can just shoot you through it. Um, people do get picked off here, and there's kind of no reason for you to get picked off here, because you can just sort of hug this wall on the left, heal all these guys as they retreat back, and then you can sort of safely move forward as the tanks come back and everything is ready to go. So it's not exactly pertinent to this, but it's just something to sort of always keep in mind that there is kind of no reason for you to be taking shots through there. And yeah, like I mentioned, Winston can just do this for free. We've got a little bit too ham. We might need to unham ourselves. This is scary. Okay, let's talk about everything happening so far. First things first, your chance on Nano Winston was either now or count to six. You actually nanoed him in a really awkward spot. Um, basically, with Gen this applies sort of with Genji, especially if they don't have Blade, unbelievably. But you want to keep in mind the movement ability of um, whoever you're nanoing. Winston's just jumped. He's not going to have another jump. And chances are the enemy team has either... They're probably engaging him, but they're probably spacing him out slightly. Right, they're going to play it like a safe distance from him. And so this Winston, if we could go to him, he's probably still got like four, three seconds on his jump. I mean, we can count it out. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and he's in. If you wait a few more seconds, you might be able to just get him... Um, like as he jumps in or as his jump comes off cooldown and then he can just use it to engage and it just gets like a little bit more efficiency it's just worth keeping in mind because it's very frustrating when you are playing like the winston or you're playing the genji or you're playing whatever and anna nanos you just as your mobility of like just as you've used your mobility uh, the enemy team just runs away the only other thing i'll criticize as well is the sleep dart back here like, we fire a sleep dart just through here, just speculatively. If they have a Bastion, don't do this. It, it's kind of obvious why, right, in a couple of seconds. Because you come up here and it's like, oh, look. And I'd honestly say anti him. Just throw the grenade at him straight away. Like, if sleep dart, like, your priority should be sleep dart, anti, and then shoot. The reason why is because if their team plays this properly, if this Ana gets a heal grenade on him, he self-heals, and Moira and Ana both pump healing into him, he might actually survive this. There's a lot of healing on their team. Uh, and Bastion is actually a tough cookie to crack. So if you just throw the nade at him, he's going to die. Like, you know for 100% for sure that he is going to die. Your DPS here is marginal in terms of its actual gain, compared to anti-healing. Sleep Dance would be nice just to, like, fuck him up so he can't actually do any damage. It's just, like, stunning him for a second. And then I think we go a little bit over-eager here. Like, we just run through the dragon. I'm fine with this. Like, this Mohu to just run forward and, like, nade in the middle of the team. It's sort of the, the suicide armor. But I think this decision to just keep, like... 
Oh, actually, it looks like we get booted by something. I think it's the diva. But this decision here, like, why are we running? Why are we running into this? We don't have grenade. This this isn't helping us. This isn't good. So it looks like yeah, something's booped us. Fine, fair enough. Back out. As long as you heal, your team wins. We just need to keep healing. Right, we've got a little bit of DPS here. We do reset, which is just good to see. And I know that this is awkward. I think Poppy mentions it. Um, like, this space is always awkward and fucky. Uh, and I agree with you, it is. But that's no reason to, like, be in front of your team. Unusual thing. Once you hear the fire in the hole, we should be backing up immediately. Arna is actually pretty good at helping with tires. Back out, scope in. If you get a shot on that and, like, Soldier gets one or two shots on it, it will actually kill a tire. So, Anna's pretty good with it. I imagine the nade was just like, oh, it's probably coming for me. This is rough. I want to do something. Something special. Let's get this nice and loud for chat as well. Uh, okay, playback speed. I just, I love the Lucio voice line. I just adore, I don't know if you guys watched like Dopa 2's animations, but man, I love Lucio. Just Dopa 2, his little funny animation, like the enemy Lucio, like allied Lucio and stuff like that. Man, I love that shit. And just like, you know, the amount of times he has Lucio, you know, keep it up, we can win this, despite being like a completely shitty situation. Oh, it's so funny to me. It's just made Lucio comical. Why is it? Someone's having a good time with the, the horn outside. They're a horny boy. You can run forward and dodge it. Ah, I think you're screwed no matter what. Like, it's this is a difficult one to dodge. The moment you see this thing going past the doorway, it's just kind of like... Bah, 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 bah. I think you could, but, like, you have to make a guess at this point of, is it going to hit this and, like, just drop? Or is it going to keep going? We guess that it's going to keep going. It barely does. And, yeah, we just don't make it. It happens. When it's a backline diva ult like that, you've generally got to kind of hope that it translates into, well, divas sort of just thrown an ult all the way into your backline. Everyone else has survived. It's fine. We'll win. But unfortunately, that's not happened yet. Let's try and focus on getting healing onto that win. That was greed. The, gr the greed that happens here. Oh, God, we're taking 30 damage. Oh, no. Better use the nade. Winston's like half dead. So someone's very proud of their car. I have to have the windows open today because it's very warm in the UK. This might be an instance where you could scope in, by the way. Again, we sort of have the T-junction, especially once this Winston starts dropping back. Um, yeah, that, this is difficult. Like, your team's just kind of futzing around. So another moment where we should be backing out. It's fine, it's all alt charge for you. Alt charge is good for you. It's a good win condition for your team. Do not see this as a failure of your team. See this as, hey, it's going to plan, guys. We're charging my ult super quick. Oh, grab. Good. Don't like that grenade. Come, just, just, your entire team's over here. Your, your entire team's over here, please. Please. I was disappointed you can't find out you can't share replays. I hope that it's coming. Like, every single interview and every single discussion I've seen Jeff have, every mention of replays, everyone's always gone, man, I wish we could share them. So hopefully replay sharing is on its way. Like, Jeff mentioned uh, in the interview with Stai that, like, yeah, the, the hard work is done. Now it's just a matter of, like, optimizing, which is fine. Do you want to know what we did wrong here? actually pretty straightforward we got in too close we're in way too close i mean you mentioned like the payload here is really goddamn awkward you're right and i'm kind of fine with us making this motion here but the moment that this guy starts getting involved and actually starts getting to the payload create a little bit of space just walk it back like we don't need to be on the payload here we shouldn't be on the payload here and this is a habit that i have as well um so i kind of you know i kind of get it which is I have trust issues, right? I don't trust people to stand on the payload and, like, try and push it in. So, like, if this junk rat, for example, came down and then, like, bounced away, and then we could just push it in, someone needs to be on the payload to do that. 
try and internalize it as a support that it is not your job, especially as Ana. If there is a fight happening on the payload, so let's say like this is the payload, and there's, there's all these people fighting around it, and you're just stood far back shooting at stuff, um, it is way more powerful. It is so powerful for your team. And like the amount of times you'll see it in a, like a pro game, on like King's Row especially, this seems to happen a lot, where it's like everyone's fighting on the payload, but you'll see the Ana at the back just plugging into it. If that Ana is not dealt with, it really causes problems for the enemy team. So it's just sort of worth t keeping that in mind, taking that in mind. Wouldn't slip to me if it wasn't for the fence wall thing. I know, I hate those barriers. I hate those barricades. They should just be like shoot throughable. And the fact that they seem to block stuff is just ridiculous. I think we get it, we're a little bit too eager to just like jump in at people. Oh. Okay, let's take a look at our team. Hog Risa, Widow Hanzo. Always an awkward one. For the love of God, please tell me you don't start up here. Do not stand up here, especially when the berry's on the low ground. Okay, thank God. I always find Rialto very awkward as um, Ana. And a Zen as well. And the reason why is simple. You have this corner. And a little bit back behind us, there is another pathway that the enemy team can easily run down. Excuse me. Ugh. And yeah, it's like your instinct, the location where your instincts tell you to stand is like literally, and if we sketch it out, it's like there's an alleyway back here. And then there's like a little thing here and a corner here. And then you've got like the thing here as well. Um... Your instinct is usually to like to stand, I've realized I've just drawn this all behind my face, but whatever, you can kind of still picture it, right? This is where the payload goes, uh, this way. Your instinct is usually to stand here, but if you stand here and a Widowmaker just pops out here, you're going to die. So you have to stand like here, or my personal favorite is honestly like standing at this corner, or you can stand all the way back here underneath where my little UI thing is, back here. Um, just be very aware of this pathway because if someone does come around here they will just try and shoot you standing in the team like this does give you options Let's see if i can erase a bunch of these um which is basically like if the team is here you can use this as like a safety route but i find that a little bit less safe than like being here if they come out you can sort of back up use this to line of sight or you can go in and join the team or you can like loop around this way you have like different ways to evade that's just sort of my personal take on it. I find this to be a little bit too close to be effective, and you can't help anyone standing on the high ground. I do really like this nade, though. That's a really nice nade. Uh, and it's, it's the exact punishment as well that, like, the Lucio fell for. Which is why I always like to wait in spawn for a moment or two. This is really nice. 13% ult charge, cannot complain. I would just tuck back in immediately. You can help a little bit with the barrier war, but it's it's going to be, like, a very minor thing. That's very good. Okay, we use the grenade for healing. That's okay. Honestly, as long as our team survives here, we should be just a-okay and fine and dandy. Again, this is where, like, experience has taught me. As we make this retreat here, I wouldn't mind just a very quick, like, lightning fast turn around and just check. Because they have, like, the Symmetra. She could just be balling it out of that alleyway. And you're in a lot of trouble if she is. You need to kind of be prepared for that. And then just turning back, heal nade, keep pumping these heals out once you realize that it's safe. Ooh! Nice. Oh, very good. Amazing. I mean, beautiful. That's what I mean with the Widowmaker, by the way. Like, it's so difficult to heal her. That's why it drives me nuts when people play from that high ground, because it's just so hard to do anything with it. It's about where I'd be pressing tab, by the way. You've got Nano. When you have Nano on a team like this, like, Roadhog is honestly who I'm looking at to Nano. I love doing this, and like this is honestly a personal favorite of mine. Which is when you see Sim set up like these teleporter bombs, where she teleports, like she puts down the teleporter and puts three turrets in it. Nading it is a okay. It'll also catch people coming through it. Beautiful. This is where I'd just be like getting a measure of where Roadhog's at. 
that's where we should be backing up. Like, at these crisis moments, this is where we should be thinking, like, okay, shit, I need to scope in to deal with all this damage, and that's usually where my head's going. Like, when you see this, two people on critical, my mind's usually like, okay, back up. No one's down here right now, everyone's pushing on the front line, fuck it, I'm gonna back away, scope in, get this healing done as quickly as I can, and efficiently as I can. Well, Riptile lands with double sniper, that's always rough. organ donor. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Someone thinks they've got a race car. We've gone a bit mental. Let's explain why. First things first. Uh, I guess against this team, yeah, you can get away with this. Like, I would not go further than this line. Right? like this this crest of the bridge the reason why is because if something does come up that you need to like back away from and duke away from this will then give you a little bit of cover to hide behind so you're not going to just die like you know that you have to contest the payload but a habit that needs killing and honestly people need to freaking learn this which is as a support just like beelining it to the payload just to contest it for a split second is not a benefit it is absolutely not a benefit because you are then dead for when this confirms and then they're just going to keep pushing Right, and there's this instinct, especially like Zen players, Ana players, and like DPS as well, going, Oh my god, Ana, you didn't just run to the payload? It's like, yeah, well, fuck, I would just instantaneously die. That's the only thing that will shift here. Once the Orisa gets here, I think you're fine here. Do not go any further forward than this. Like, play with that Orisa barrier and let the Orisa freaking worry about the payload. He, she's the one that needs to do this. And I get that lack of trust. I understand it, but we don't need to be in any closer than that. As long as we can pump healing into these people, they will be somewhat, like, unkillable. That's where the um, Symmetra barrier really messes you up. That's why Symmetra is a really solid pick against Ana. Causes a lot of problems. And this is a good example of what happens when you just suicide in. It's a bit tilted to me, that wall. Yeah, the wall is a massive problem. But honestly, yeah, just stay on the side of the wall and just pump healing into these people. Like, as long as you are hitting these healers, you should be okay. Uh, or as, rather, as long as you are hitting these heals, you're going to be fine. The hog just kind of suicides. And honestly, this is like a learning moment for the hog. More than you. And especially once you get pushed out, like, you just take the push out. Like, take the hint, right? You've been pushed out several times. Like, the Orisa needs you as well. And I think that was an attempt at a suicide, Ana. Which, if you got the nade off, then great. Like, if as long as everybody dies on the payload, it should be okay. It's kind of fine to die on the payload. But in general, what I would try and do is, like, maximize the amount of healing I'm getting out of the, um... The fight, and going from there. Well. Oh, okay. Orisa did a great job. Surprising. Your team now has a Farah. When someone picks a Farah and I'm playing Ana, I usually have the mindset of, well, it's your freaking problem now. Um, like... I will try and help Afara where possible, but I will never really go out of my way to do it. And the reason why is if you start doing that, you'll spend all your time trying to heal Afara, barely be able to heal her, and then other people will die. Um, your priority remains the Roadhog, the Orisa, now the McCree, uh, and just sticking on those. If Afara wants healing, she can find a health pack or she can get back to you, right? It's honestly okay. I mean, Riptire traded for a Nano Lucio. You'll take it. Nice sleep. Don't mind that people woke that up. Like, they're doing enough damage to it. Like, if the fire plays like this, then it's fine. But 
Yeah, don't like overemphasize the flower in your mind. On the bright side, I hope that the Farah hasn't gone. Oh my god, you should pick Mercy now because I've decided to play Farah. You must pick Mercy. I demand it. I can't play Farah without a Mercy. That always tilts me. That tilts me so much. The simple reason why is if a DPS, like, if a support told a DPS, yeah, you shouldn't play this, you should play this, the DPS would probably go, oh, fuck you. So why then can people turn around and say to a support, yes, I demand you play this, serve me, slave. Slap slap, it's like, no, sod off. We're getting tunnel vision. We're trying to heal, what, the, the Farah or the McCree? I can't tell. I think that's the McCree. Yeah. When this wall goes up, um, like, don't panic. Keep in mind, at a certain moment, Oh, I thought we had Nano. We don't have Nano. Okay, fine. Fair enough. I'm actually okay with us running into it in this case. I thought we had Nano for some reason. If you had Nano, you just Nano the Roadhog here and it's all good. Yeah, here, actually, it's fine. The wall is very annoying for, Smet uh, for Ana. Good. A little bit slow on the old shots, but I'm glad that like our reaction was to just to turn and start shooting at her. Correct. We just need to get it faster. Hello, Moira. Goodbye, Moira. Is that our Moira? What? No. Okay, that's the McCree. I thought the McCree was Moira for a second. I'm like, what? What the hell? Hey! We're at the, the correct junction again. Nano Orisa is better than you would expect. That's what I'm going to say at this point. Against tanks, Nano Orisa actually melts faces. So this is a good situation. So we got special attack. Reinhardt goes nuts. Nano the Orisa now, and the Reinhardt dies. I almost guarantee it. It is a very, very, very powerful thing to do against a tank. Um, Orisa can kill Reinhardt pretty quickly when she's in his face like this. It's, it is a lot like the cutscene. She doesn't have a cool sword arm to do it, but she just sort of shoves a gun in there and just goes, and it just blenders him. Um, I'd say this fight is honestly, like, not decided enough that I would feel comfy nanoing someone. Maybe the McCree, maybe the Orisa. The Roadhog, I'd be less keen on nanoing because he doesn't have whole hog. What have we got? We've got the Roadhog? Okay. Again, it's not quite what I would go for. This is why- this is- this is the exact reason why I say don't- don't with Faras. Just don't. Look, look how much time we're taking. Look how long that took. And look, Roadhog's almost dead. You could be healing the Roadhog. Like, this is far in a nutshell. If she wants healing, she can fucking come to you or she can land. Take a choice. But Roadhog needs you. It's so tilting, because literally you just want to be like, Farah, no, down a bit, no, up a bit, up a bit, down, left, left a bit. Come on, please. Help me out here. Throw me a freaking bone. It's never going to work. Never. You need like a god tier fire to actually be able to think about that kind of thing. If you are a fire player with an Ana, like help your Ana out. She's your mum. Look after her. You wouldn't try and tilt your mum in real life, would you? Okay. I, like, I do this as well, so I can't judge it too harshly. I think with a Lu like, I think this is fine with a Zen. With a Lucio, I'd say this is unnecessary. But your team is also pushing forward slightly, which is basically using the nade to counteract orbs. Um, with a Lucio, probably actually not going to matter. Like, the Lucio will outheal it. Nice. <laughs> I like the moment of panic there as we get the heal in and then it's like, oh shit, no bullets. Grenade. Nice. Done. Oh, the shot's good. Keep an eye on this fire. 
Okay. This is the position where you can keep an eye on the fire, so. I understand this grenade. I think this grenade is fine if this guy didn't then step back. If Once this guy steps back and you land the shot here, don't worry about the nade anymore. You don't need it. Um, if he stepped inwards, then it's fine. Again, this is like a trust thing with DPS. Where I would nade this just because I don't trust the McCree to actually back out. Like I suspect he's going to just run forward. And that's why I would nade that. I was on 156 eight points. You got a Lucio. He, he'll pick you up. Like, you're not looking to fight at this moment. You shouldn't be thinking about fighting. I'm actually more okay with that nade, because they're engaging on you, so this just gives everyone healing, makes Lucio viable. Roadhog's gonna whole hog. Get the nano on him. Nice. A little bit slower than I would like. Like, it's all about reading what the enemy's doing, and also I haven't seen the timer, but hey, we should be paying attention to that. They're engaging hard. The moment this red dog whole hogs, just hit him with it. Just nano him. Um, and if you hit the Orisa, that's honestly fine too. It doesn't matter. Like, there's no Lucio in front of you here. Honestly, either of these three is going to be okay. Roadhog's going to be best, though. The reason why Roadhog is best here is just because he's going to blow up the Reinhardt barrier immediately, and so your team is just kind of free to do what it likes. And Roadhog pushes out and wins it. And there we go. Ooh. Oh. 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 Everyone got to see my desktop. Oh. <gasps> Shock. Shock horror. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Like. As weird as it sounds, I think it's a worthy investment to invest in your PC a little bit more. Just because. And the reason why is simple, actually. Um, I'm right. Where's that really dumb image with, like, the bullet? I guess this kind of shows it. So let's show it using this. The reason why frame rate is important, let's talk about this, is... It's, it feels like it's obvious to say, but hey, yeah, you get more frames at a higher frame rate, right? But what does that actually mean? Why does that influence your aim? Well, keep in mind that, you know, what you're seeing isn't actually moving, or rather it's it's moving but in a very specific way, which is that it is a picture of something here, here, and here, and then because it's played quickly, that translates as movement, right? So this is three frames, this is 60 frames, this is 24 frames. Let's also hide the chat box. Get it out of the way just for a moment. The reason why having higher frame rates help with aim is because rather than seeing like one, two, three, suddenly you're seeing, you know, five or even more. And it gives you a smoother idea of where the op object is. So if you had something playing at three frames and you just saw it go do do do, you can't really anticipate it very well. You can't really figure out where it is. You can't smoothly see where, what it's doing, where it's going and figure out its trajectory extremely well. The smoother it gets and the more you see it moving, the easier it gets to figure out where it is at any given moment and put the crosshair on it and hit it with something. So it does have a dramatic impact on your shooting and how smooth it is really can influence how you know, like how smooth your aim is. And with Ana, aim does matter. So we need to sort of talk about this. Um, if your computer is struggling to run Overwatch, it's probably struggling to run a lot of things as well. So if you do play a lot of games on PC, it might not be a bad time to invest in a graphics card. Um, just just to help out a little bit with the, the old gaming. You'll find it a lot easier to, to get sort of smoother, better aim, and you'll be surprised at how much easier it is. Uh, the other thing I'd say, so from like, yeah, spend a thousand pounds upgrading your graphics card. Go do that immediately. Like, I'm aware it's not that simple. The other thing is just keeping in mind of our positioning at times. Like, we just tend to find ourselves very far forwards at very awkward moments. Um, and I think, like... The thing that grounds this as a lesson to you as you play is the moments when you are in a situation like this one, for example, and if your team is just stood here and you're stood like over here or over there or whatever, and you're stood somewhere safe and you're just healing and healing and healing and healing and healing and healing, um, and you're just pumping healing into them. 
it's amazing how much people can endure. Like, Anna can put out a lot of healing very quickly. So, it's sort of internalizing the fact that where is my optimal, like, where am I at my best? What is my absolute best situation? And how can I recreate that? Well, your best situation is probably in a position where you can just tunnel healing into people and they can shoot into your team all they like. But if their team is missing bits and pieces and has, you know, Junkrat Sim, for example, like it was for a little while, Junkrat Sim is not really going to kill people unless the Symmetra runs all the way into your team, in which case your team should be able to handle her, right? Junkrat, like as we saw in the, the first video we did today, Junkrat can't kill through an Ana very well. It's very difficult for him to do it. Um, so like if you just pump healing into that, you're going to be okay. You're going to get nano boost very quickly. Your team's actually safe and your team will win any fight just through attrition alone because they can't kill you. You might be able to kill them. Congratulations, you win. So it's it's a very like positional based thing of just be very cautious of those instincts to like, run forward and like try and slap a grenade into the enemy team, for example, or running onto the payload. And I get that it's frustrating to heal past the payload, especially like here. This area is very frustrating. What I'd say is once the payload is in, you can then just go and stand off to the side, for example, and get some good healing done there. Or you can just stand in like the doorway here. Just make sure you know you're near a wall, not in the middle. Middle middle is bad. Right, we don't want to be that guy. We don't want to be the Zen from the last coaching. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's going to be it from me. Overwatch League is starting in 15 minutes, so I'm going to let you go and enjoy the pre-show. If you have any questions, now is always a good time to ask. It's always a good time to like start throwing stuff at me towards the end. If you have it about meta in general, about these heroes, whatever you got, feel free. Otherwise, I am just going to wrap up. I need more footage. Uh, these are recorded at 5 o'clock. So please send footage in oamreviews at gmail.com. You can record from replays now, so you don't even have to worry about recording your games. If you have a particularly close game and you're like, man, actually, I think that would be kind of good for coaching, feel free to send it in. More footage is better. For next week, if you are watching right now and you're thinking, man, yeah, I, I think I want to send some footage in, next week there will be uh, placements again. Feel free to send in the placements, send them in without a rank, and we'll play Guess My SR. And if you're in the chat at the time, you can say, hey, yeah, no, I actually ended up at this SR. Do try and figure out, like, whereabouts you are, so, I, like, I'm not just guessing into the dark, and you're like, well, I don't fucking know either, um, because that's not very useful to anybody, but that would be fun. Any particular heroes you want? Uh, at this point, I just need footage, to be honest with you. Uh, so if you do want to send in some Zen, because I know you are a Zen player, Missile Mage, feel free. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's going to be it from me. Thank you for joining me. It's good to be back with Coaching the Many. It's been fun. Hopefully this has been educational. And yeah. Uh, as always, oh Lady Gamer Jade. Oh, Lady Gamer Jade. As Anna, I have a fire I play with her quite often. He literally will stand in front of me when he needs heals. I know Patman is bow and send him on the way. <laughs> See? Yeah, it needs to be that level. It really needs to be that level. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Well, thank you for the follow as well. Uh, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you, those of you who sub. Sub Scrub Lord, Swiss Butio, and Poe. Uh, at the moment, because I need footage, I'll still include this message, but I will say if you do send something in, I'll probably see it. Um, which is, basically subs have slightly higher priority for footage, so if you are a subscriber, do mention it. Uh, and I will prioritize it, but at the moment I just need footage, so hey, send stuff in. Alright guys, uh, enjoy Overwatch League. I need to cool down and need to eat some food, so I'm gonna go do that. <laughs>